ムーマハヤー<laughs> Hello and welcome to the first ever First of Figures review on the Game Over Jack channel. This is the Spiral Reignited exclusive statue, and it is the most beautiful purple boy I've ever seen, unlike those horrific incense burners. No,、oh, I don't like that. It's, it's posh. Now, I've been a fan of the Spiral games ever since Demo Disc 52 on the PlayStation 1. We couldn't afford the game at the time, but eventually my sister let me borrow it and she never got it back. We were broke ass bitches, all we were allowed was demos. <laughs> From that day forward, I loved everything Spyro and everything Insomniac. But this is the Reignited series, which was published by Activision, but developed by Toys for Bob, who done a phenomenal job with the game. Toys for Bob have actually managed to take our little original PlayStation hero and make it available for everyone on Xbox, on Switch, and on PC. Anyway, before I ramble any further, Let's just get on with the review. But before we get started with the review, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. If you're looking for the unboxing and assembly of this statue, I've posted the links in the description. I'm diving right in and starting on the prettiest purple boy I've ever seen. Honestly, how the hell did First of Figures get this guy so perfect? I have a few other First of Figures pieces in my collection, including the original Spiral, and none of them even hold a candle to this statue. And they kept the price down? How? Starting with the head, he's got that playful little smile and looking off to the side while he's gliding. The teeth and mouth are perfect. I mean, they even got his tongue in there. His snout and nostrils are perfectly formed, and then his eyes, which really bring this little guy to life with his happy expression. One of the best features of this entire piece is the amazing colouring they've used for Spyro. The vibrant purple colour with the specks of darker purple all over the body is incredible. This also adds to the scales, which also use a darker shade of purple itself. Now, the scales on the side of his head look great, running up to his amazingly sculpted horns and fin. The colors, the texturing, and the little scrapes on the horns are absolutely insane. And I love the way that they made his scales spotty rather than his whole body being scaled like the original. Absolutely amazing. Now, moving down from the head, we have that beautiful scaling all over his back, with the small spikes forming between his wings and running down to his tail. His wings are sculpted brilliantly as well, with some scaly texturing throughout, and the use of yellows and oranges for the paint are spot on. There is a small issue with his left wing, however, with it not keying in correctly, and it feels quite loose, and the seam is fairly visible. And if any knocks on the statue, knocks on whatever is holding the statue happens, that piece is going to come straight out due to there being no magnets. Whoa! <laughs> The right wing, however, doesn't have this issue. Sadly, both of these parts are not magnetized, which is very strange as I would have thought that would have been a must for these parts. But maybe that was just to keep down Spyro's weight. Onto his underside, we have similar textures to his horns running down from his neck to his chest. But once we reach the front paws, we sort of get less texturing and the painting seemingly gets steadily less detailed. There's definitely some paint bleeding between the yellow and the purple portions as well. And as I said, the texturing has definitely lessened. The paws themselves are nicely sculpted and painted, though, and I love how his front paws are curved in and the back paws are flat. I almost overlooked this, but they even included his angular little spirals to his knees. I always love those little details. I did find a bit of a dent and a scratch on his back right foot, but I've contacted customer services about this. Hopefully, they can help me with it. Then we move on to the tip of his tail, which has that spiral design. Which is much larger on the reignited version in comparison to the original. The texturing on this part isn't super intricate, but it still looks great and works really well with the rest of Spyro. On to Spyro's best friend and constant health bar and shield. You know what? With this one, I'm gonna start with his facial expression. I know they were going for cute, but this is the thing of nightmares. I love it, but why do I feel like he's gearing up to take on Nasty Nork himself? Is Sparks the true villain here? <laughs> anyway, I love the colors I've used for his main body and the way they've sculpted his little legs using what I can only assume is PVC materials, since they have a little bit of movement to them and a little bit of give. The color of his eyes seems to be a little bit off. I don't know what it is, or if it's just me, but the pinkish red color to his eyes seems really odd. I also noticed that, unlike the promotional material and the prototype, His upper teeth have been shortened. This might be why he looks a little bit more psychotic. I'm just glad they didn't go with a David Spade voice actor for this version. 
that would have made this ten times more scary. What's the matter, little Spyro? You can't fly? Now onto his wings. I love the changes in colours here, from the pale blue to the pink, and then the peach colour. It just looks great. I know what they were trying to go for here with trying to make it emulate his wings flapping fast, and while it works for the most part, I would imagine it would have looked just as good if it was a semi-transparent looking solid wing for each part. But either way, this still looks great and I appreciate the effort they went to to make this look like a dynamic shot. Now before we move on to the base, I want to talk about these wind portions that hold Spyro and Sparks onto the statue itself. Now to begin with, I did have a major issue with this part, as I found that the wind effect that attaches to the crystal closest to the rod that holds Spyro has a rather large crack and it's seemingly getting larger holding him up. This is a huge disappointment, but thankfully First and Figures customer service is on the case and is already in the process of sending me a replacement part for this portion. So a huge thanks to them for helping with this issue. Great customer service as always. Another issue I've had and I've seen others have is the key for the wind that holds sparks doesn't key the whole way in and leaves a fairly large gap. It's a bit of a nuisance, but hopefully that's something else that customer services can help with and hopefully they can help everyone else that's had similar issues. Now back to the review of the actual part. The painting of the whites and pale blues is really nice and I do love how they added sort of dynamic look to it as well as disguise the fact that both Sparks and Spyro are suspended in the air with metal rods. I just hope we won't have an issue with leaning over time but no doubt they've taken this into account. The base. Now this is the exclusive version of the base, so what does that mean? LEDs! come with the exclusive version of this statue. <laughs> the LEDs on this statue have two different settings, the always on setting and the animated setting. Personally the animated setting is my preferred choice because the always on setting has a very harsh light and washes out almost the entirety of the base. Now I do love the animated setting more, I just love the way it uses the lights to emulate the waves moving. Stunning little added feature. And depending on your geographical location, the statue comes with a battery for you to charge, so it doesn't need to always be plugged into the mains. It also comes with a little first or figures micro USB. So a question I asked myself a few times, what level is this statue actually based on? We know it's the flight level, and it's most likely from the first game rather than the sequels. But as it turns out, they all feature crystals in some form, so I'm going to go with Night Flight, mostly because of the promo materials. Now I love this water effect, admittedly it would have looked better with a deeper blue look to it, but so that the LEDs could shine through they must have chosen to keep it more clear. But the waves are really nicely sculpted in the tips of each wave having that white colouring to them makes it look even better. And then the one long cut into the waves directly below Sparrow show how he's affecting the water and it's just a really cool detail. Now onto the crystals, these beautiful clear resin crystals are honestly incredible. The two small ones at the front look beautiful and then the three at the back. The centre one is attached to the main base itself and the two on either side key in to hold that wind effect then Spyro and Sparks themselves. Honestly though, the way in which these key in at the same time as the wind effect was a real nuisance. This might not have been an issue if it wasn't for the cracked wind part so it might just have been my one. But either way, the crystals needed or were advised to be keyed in at the same time, which was a pain. And because these parts aren't exactly light, it makes the back end of the statue really heavy. So when assembling this piece, please be careful because it can absolutely topple over. Mine almost did a fair few times before I got Spyro keyed in to offset that weight. Either way, these crystals are beautiful, the vibrant pink colour and the way that they're sculpted just look amazing. Now the only extras that come with this statue are the authentication cards and the little day one sticker that comes if you pre-order the statue right as it goes up for pre-order. Now onto a frequently asked question, the size. The statue comes in a total of 45 centimeters tall, the width is 42 centimeters, and the depth is 41 centimeters. So not an overly large statue compared to what I usually purchase, but 
definitely a perfect size for this guy and it fits perfectly with the rest of my PlayStation Heroes lineup. And now on to the pricing. This statue comes in at a total of $424.99, not including shipping. Which, as anyone who has watched any of my other videos, knows that it's considerably less than I would usually spend on a statue. And considering the detail of this one, this is a perfect price in my opinion. But overall, I absolutely love this statue, the perfect purple boy, and his little buggy buddy. This is just amazing, and I absolutely love it. Now, first of figures, let's get that crystallized dragon out, and how about some villains? Or some other characters? I mean, we need money bags. Even if you make him a little coin pot, that'd work great. Get us Ripto, Hunter, even a crystallized dragon again, but in the reignited form would be perfect. Sometime soon, please. <laughs> But that pretty much wraps up this review. What did you think of this statue? If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more statue reviews. But until the next one, thanks for watching and see you next time.